Vivek, congratulations for the vehicle launch. Can you tell us what sets this vehicle apart from other electric LCVs already in the market? So, you know, this is the first offering. It's a one-ton LCV. Today, if you look at competition in the market, I think the only competition is today a Tata ELCV. Uh, first of all, the platform is, uh, is completely different. Our vehicle is on a high voltage platform form compared to say a Tata which is at a low voltage platform. Correct. So that's the major differentiator. Now being on a high voltage platform again it offers uh, a much higher range. Mm -hmm. So real world our range is about 190 kilometers Correct. as compared to about 100 plus uh, for the Tata variant. Mm -hmm. uh, we are offering fast charge which our competition is not. Correct. So our vehicle can be charged within one hour mm -hmm. and then it's again good to go. Whereas they are on a low charge platform. Right. Uh, lastly, we are on the CCS platform. So, if you all the charging infrastructure, if you see in the country, is on, on that platform. So again, the power and the gradient on a vehicle is much stronger than that. So, that means we can load up to one ton on the vehicle as compared to about uh, 700 uh, to 750 kgs on a Tata ELCV. And because of the gradability of the vehicle, it can uh, be, uh, be used in any terrain. So, what is the gradability to be precise? It's about 23% is the right. gradability. So, when any uh, basically we are saying that any even on, on mountain terrain also this vehicle can be used. Right, right, right. And uh, so, what do you think is the primary uh, application for the vehicle? Is it uh, like mid mile connectivity, intercity? So, it is uh, basically this vehicle is mainly designed for the last mile. Because typically a one-ton vehicle is used for the last mile, but what we have seen is that because of the range, mm -hmm. there's a lot of mid-mile application also for which the vehicle is being used. Right. So it is mainly for these purposes, and the idea is that today, compared to a, a three-wheeler, today a lot of operators are using it because there is no credible uh, alternate version available. And if you see in most of our cities, the push from the government mm -hmm. is towards uh, ELCVs. Right. Plus, there is a distinct advantage for the operators. So today, our vehicle uh, per kilometer is about uh, two, uh, two rupees per kilometer is the cost of running the vehicle, as against close to about eight rupees for a ICE engine vehicle. Mm -hmm. So there is a six rupee saving per kilometer. So if a typically a vehicle would run about 150 odd kilometers a day, mm -hmm. so you are talking about close to about 800 rupees. Mm -hmm. Save right. for a vehicle of this size mm -hmm. over a month. If somebody saves about 20 25,000 rupees, mm -hmm. that's a very, very credible saving. So, whatever the little bit incremental EMIs which they have to pay, right, those are well uh, taken care of, right. So, since the, uh, the range of the vehicle is higher, it has uh, it's compatible with the CCS2 charges. So, uh, that would mean that uh, there would be certain additional uh, costs attached with the uh, price of the vehicle and uh, we would like to know what that is and how would that impact the you know the perception of uh, getting this vehicle vis-a-vis -vis, uh, something like a Tata Ace Electric. So we are launching the vehicle at uh, a similar price point or maybe a little less price point than a Tata Ace. Mm -hmm. So our X showroom price is 10.35. Okay. So for the uh, vehicle, uh, from the price point, the vehicle ownership, there is no additional costs uh, which are uh, customer has to bear. Okay, okay. And was there any particular reason that you were able to attain the similar price point uh, in spite of having uh, better features? So I think as because you mentioned that uh, this is a grounds up ELCV vehicle when it was designed and it was designed as I mentioned in my presentation the idea was to make a vehicle which is 100% made in India. So it's not that we are importing parts or we are using a ICE vehicle and converting into an electric vehicle. Right. I think because of that and then the complementary infrastructure which Jupiter has, so our capex has been uh, much lower compared to a lot of other startups which are, not I wouldn't say they are startups, but other players who are coming in, in the segment. Right. So I think those are the advantages uh, which we are able to pass on to the consumer. Right, right, right. Also I think uh, the product coming from an established uh, business group uh, like yours, so that also has certain advantages. And yeah, definitely because uh, you know, as a uh, for us, uh, especially in this, and we are not looking for any external funding as of. So it's uh, we are a very strong group, which we are self-sufficient. We are generating a lot of profits. Right. So it's a business which we can easily uh, sustain right. and and grow it. Right. So since the electric LCV market is uh, at a nascent stage right now, and if we uh, see the cumulative sales of all the OEMs. Uh, the numbers are uh, although growing uh, at this stage uh, uh, you know it might be difficult 
for the the dealers to kind of uh, you know um, justify the investments that they're making right now. So um, in in your case, you know uh, the dealers, the dealer network that you're rolling out. Uh, how exactly would the economics work out for them, uh, given that it's you know the first product of the vehicle right now? So uh, uh, initially, you know, we are rolling uh, the products out in uh, mainly tier one cities, mm -hmm. where there's already a demand for this kind of vehicles. And though, as you rightly said, that it's a nascent stage, but however, we are seeing the conversion rates to be very, very strong. Right. So because I think the challenge was that there were not enough credible vehicles in this segment. Right. And now with uh, lot most of the OEMs launching the electric vehicle and one or two other players coming with it. I think uh, there will be more education, Correct. and the I think the conversion rates will be as you saw in case of three wheelers. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know exact numbers, but I think close to about eighty percent of three wheelers on the commercial side, which are sold today, are all electric. So I think you'll have similar thing happening on the electric ELCVs also, and then from government there is so much push. Right. On especially in the major cities, mm -hmm. say a city like Bangalore or Delhi. Uh, to right now, even in Madhya Pradesh, they have uh, right now announced the new EV policy, mm -hmm. in which for each commercial vehicle they are giving a fifty thousand rupee subsidy, the right. state. Right. And plus they have targeted to uh, by twenty thirty they want at least thirty percent of the fleet to be electric. Right. In Bangalore, they are coming out with a tender where they want uh, their garbage collection vehicles. Uh, the last mile garbage collection vehicles to be electric. Mm -hmm. So there is a tender of close to about 5,000 vehicles they are thinking of uh, coming out. Correct. So the market is expanding in a big way. So we feel that uh, there is enough financial uh, uh, motivation for the dealer. I'm not saying it's going to be uh, easy work. We are going to all work together. But I think our dealers are also very excited and very motivated. All right. Uh, would you want to put any number to the, uh, the expected market size for e and CVs over the next one or two years? See, overall market, if you look at the this segment, the last mile, right. because we are not only sticking to one ton, we will be slowly launching the two ton as well as the three ton vehicle. Mm -hmm. So overall market, if you look at it's about close to four lakh to five lakh vehicles annually. Right. So even in the next two, three years or four years, even there's a 25, 30 percent conversion, which mm -hmm. we feel that should happen. Okay. There's a naturally it should happen mm -hmm. because there's a lot of price advantages. And as you, you are more than me, you are aware that the charging infra is growing so rapidly. Right. So you are talking about close to a market of more than 100,000 uh, 100, vehicles annually. Right. So right. the market size is there. It is how you are able to establish your product. Yes. I think for us, the key is we are not worried about the market size. Mm -hmm. We are very confident that the market is going to come. All right. For us, very important is to establish our dealer network, to establish the servicing infrastructure. I think that is the key because uh, it is for the since we are a new brand, the customer has to be confident about the brand. Right. I think right now that is the only focus. Right. And on the finance side, uh, what is the uh, comfort level that you've seen with the financiers for E and CVs? So I think the financiers are getting more and more com confident and comfortable with the product. Uh, I think if you this two years back, this would have been a uh, challenging scenario. Much more challenging scenario. I think now the market has evolved a lot, right. and not only in India but globally. I think so. That barrier, I think, has been crossed. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of uh, acceptability for financiers, and mm -hmm. and then our advantage is that we are working with very strong partners. Say today on the Axel side, on the American Axel, we are working with Nitec on the motors. Okay. So we are working with very established players who are already across all brands. Our battery is in house. So uh, that gives a lot of confidence to the financiers. Uh, can you tell us more about the battery? So uh, see, the battery is on on the LFP platform, mm -hmm. which is the the mm -hmm. platform for the future. I think it's going to stay. Uh, we recently acquired Log9 because we, uh, for us, if we were wanting to be a serious player in this segment, we wanted our own black battery platform. And plus, we had other railway. We are already working yeah. with the batteries on the railway applications for the Vande Bharat, for the LHB coaches. So we and on the best business. So we needed this uh, platform. So it is we acquired the company along with the team and the entire infrastructure. So that gave us uh, a lot of uh, heads up on the business. Right. And uh, regarding the plant, so. Uh, can you also tell us what is the current production capacity for the plant and what is the possible scale up in the years? So to right now, this plant has been set up to produce about 8,000 vehicles. Mm -hmm. It is mainly uh, assembly plant. Mm -hmm. 
because uh, we already have the infrastructure to produce chassis as well as the cabins. So the idea is that how do we complement the existing infrastructure and marry all together. Right. Because the lower your capex is, mm -hmm. the better you utilize all your infrastructure, mm -hmm. your chances of succeeding are much stronger. Right. So it is to produce about 8,000 vehicles. Right. And I think once we reach close to those numbers, mm -hmm. uh, I think scale up will happen very quickly. Right. 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 So I wish you all the very best and the whole Jupiter team. Congratulations. Thank you. So Thank much. you. Thank you. Thanks.